Hello, I'm Matteo Ubinati, the founder and creator of FraserTools.com, the world's number one portal specialized in router bits and in the milling of wood and derivative wood products, and the founder and creator of the Fraser Academy, the first online training school on wood and derivative wood products. In this video, unique in its kind, I'm going to explain which router bit to choose and how to use it to cut wood and derivative wood products based on the hardness of the material and on the specifics of your CNC pantograph. The method I'm going to show you is the same one I've been applying and improving for years to solve thousands of requests for direct assistance from all of you who work with router bits, so you can totally trust it, it is truly as valid as a scientific method. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you four different cutting operations, the cutting of a multi-layer birch panel with Bravo roughing router bit, 8mm shank, and other alternatives, the cutting of a multi-layer birch panel with nesting delta bit compact, 12mm shank, the cutting of a multi-layer birch panel with nesting diamond helical router bit, 12mm shank, the cutting of a multi-layer bilaminate panel with nesting diamond router bit with high auxiliary and 14mm shank. If you're very observant, you have already guessed that one of the fundamental criteria to obtain safe cuts without the risk of breaking the router bit, whether you are nesting or replicating various shapes, is to keep the cutting diameter and the measure of the shank as large as possible, compatibly with the waist, especially when you're cutting a hard type of wood in one pass. Before we begin, I must warn you that in this video I will not be using a chip extractor because I do not want my previous camera to be sucked up inside the collection silo, located outside the woodworking shop. But let's get started with the first project. This work can be carried out even by those who do not have a professional CNC. We're going to cut an 18mm multi-layer birch panel, a hard type of wood, with a Bravo router bit with 8mm of diameter and an 8mm shank from the Boss Beaver family, the original router bit for wood that thanks to its special diamond powder coating, is going to solve all your problems related to low abrasion resistance, poor chip flow, and chemical aggression that may occur during milling. This ensures a longer duration to your cutting edge, up to three to four times longer than an equivalent uncoated Fraser bit. The Bravo router bit comes with a chip breaker, created by adding additional discharges in the active part of the cutting edge. This increases resistance to abrasion and allows a high feed speed, more than other equivalent router bits without it. However, the router bit may leave a slight roughness on the side of your workpiece, so I recommend using it when you do not need a perfectly smooth finished cut. Another option is the Charlie router bit that, like the Bravo, has three positive cutting helixes with a chip breaker that alternates with the finishing helix. This router bit comes with all the advantages of the Bravo and it guarantees a better finish. Finally, if you cannot stand the idea of having a less than perfect finish on your workpiece, you can use the Alpha Positive Double Helix router bit, a recommendation. This model has no chip breaker, so remember to select the widest diameter that you can set compatibly with the scraps to avoid unpleasant breakages. Besides the diameter, knowing how to evaluate the right cutting height of the router bit is essential. The cutting height must be slightly more than the height of the panel. For example, when you cut a 15 mm high panel, I recommend using a router bit with a maximum cutting height of 20 to 22 mm. 18 mm is even better. Remember that the higher the length of the router bit and of the panel, the greater the risk of generating vibrations that will worsen the finish. And what if you need to work with narrower corners or shapes? How do you do that with a big router bit? Do not worry. Once you are done cutting with your bigger router bits, you can go over the corners of your template with a smaller diameter router bit. I understand that this extra step might be an annoyance, but I assure you that even professional woodworkers and large mass production companies have been using this method for dozens of years and they are very careful to not waste time and money. So trust me and memorize the strategy I just revealed to you. You'll be able to apply it to your works and your skills will skyrocket. But back to our work. As I said before, we are cutting our 18 mm multi-layer birch panel with an 8 mm router bit in three passes. We could easily do it in one or two passes, but we prefer to show you the whole process as if you were using a smaller CNC. I would like to point out that in this case, we are using a router bit with a cutting length way longer than necessary, 35 mm for a panel of 18 mm, but we have fixed it by setting the router bit in the collet as much as possible. We are also making shallow passes, and so we can operate safely, but let's enjoy our router bit at work.
Great! While keeping in mind all the steps I have taught you, we can move on to a cutting method suitable for professional pantographs and less hard materials with our Delta router bit with a double cutting edge, one positive and one negative. This tool and the next two you are going to see is specific for nesting. That is the process of quick cutting, laying out parts on a flat sheet of material to reduce the raw material waste. The Delta router bit that we are using has a diameter of 12 millimeters and a cutting height of 22 millimeters. Code P306.120S. Dot 12D. This time we're cutting everything in one pass. This tool's double helix allows it to cling to the panel, increasing considerably the stability and smoothness of the cut. We must be careful with double helix router bits to bring out their cutting edge under the panel or in case you are doing multiple passes, which by the way are not recommended. To bring in the entire positive part plus a few millimeters of the negative part in the head, as not to ruin and burn the piece. The criteria for choosing the right cutting parameters are exactly those I have explained to you before. Anyway, in the case of nesting, if you want to get a good cut, I recommend a router bit with at least a diameter of 12 millimeters on hardwoods and of 8 millimeters on softwoods. Router bits with special diameters can be used to reshape certain corners or parts of the template. But now let's watch and listen to the Delta router bit at work. Not bad, right? Let's move on to the next project. This time we're going to use the nesting router bit with diamond cutting plates. We are using a router bit of the Diatop line with a triple helix and a diameter of 12 millimeter. Code D301.120.25D. Its body is made of a vibration absorbing alloy that ensures greater stability, less vibrations, and a great finish. I would like to remind you that router bits with diamond plates can last 40 times longer than other uncoated carbider router bits, and therefore specific for long run production. As we've already done with the Delta router bit, we are cutting an 18mm birch plywood in one single pass. But let's enjoy the Diatop D301 in action. Well, as you've just seen, the cutting process is fast and smooth. You can replicate it on many panels before having to send the diatop router bit to Sandro, the director of Fraser Service, to resharpen it. Moving on to our last topic, we are now talking about one of the most problematic materials to cut, for those who are not Fraser affiliates, of course. The bilaminate chipboard, MDF, or multi-layer panels. To cut a double-layer material, we need one of our best router bits, both in terms of performance and structure. We're going to use the Diatop FRD.303, a compact nesting router bit made of the same anti-vibration material as the previous one, plus a triple staggered covering for its cutting plates, and a much greater axility, which allows a smoother cut and an even better finish. It is specific for coated and painted panels. I would like to point out that if you need to cut a material with a thin coating such as paper or with a lacquered coating, I recommend you use the Diatop FRD.108 router bit, whose cutting edges have an axility of 45 degrees. But let's get back to the cutting process. The FRD.303 router bit has a diameter of 14 millimeters, so it can cut into the panel even faster, while keeping cutting stability at the highest. Now let's enjoy this router bit at work. And here we are. Look at the precision we have achieved while maintaining, or rather increasing, the parameters of the previous machining process. Well, now that we've reached the end of our four simulations, let's do a quick recap. 
We have started off by cutting a multi-layer birch panel with an 8mm router bit, simulating the cut for those who do not own a professional panograph. After this, we have switched to nesting router bits, and we have cut panels in one pass starting with Delta, from the Boss Beaver line. The original router bit coated with diamond powder that lasts three times longer. Then we have moved on to the Adia top line, with the FRD.301 router bit, with double or triple cutting helixes, which has allowed a faster and more stable cutting, since this line is designed for mass production. And lastly, we've seen and listened to the FRD.303 router bit at work, from the Diatop line as well. This is the top if you want a fast and clean cutting process on bilaminate panels, thanks to its great axility of cut and its triple coating. Keep in mind the criteria I've taught you for choosing the size of your router bit. They are key to a well-executed cut. If you missed any part, you can find the complete guide in the description box below. Finally, for proper maintenance, we're going to clean the router bits with our natural degreaser, Toolsner 3.0. When cleaned and dried thoroughly, we're going to apply our exclusive Bit Top, the miraculous liquid that improves your tool's performance and lifetime. It's only available for free if you buy our router bits directly from our online megastore. For the maintenance of spindles and collets, check the video in the box above as soon as it's published. Great! I've just revealed to you the scientific method for cutting wood and choosing the correct CNC router bit, whether you're a hobbyist or are working at a professional level. If you like this video and want more practical and effective advice in the world of milling, then the Fraser Academy is the place for you. It is the best resource for online training on router bits and on the milling of wood dedicated to hobbyists and crafters. Now you can finally become skilled at using router bits. If you want to know more about all the robust Fraser router bits and all the accessories used in this video, which are the key to achieve a perfect result and to avoid any waste of time and any loss of enthusiasm trying to recreate a project with a router bit that lacks precision and burns the wood. Check out our website www.frasertools.com. It's the world's number one online megastore dedicated to router bits and to the milling of wood and derivative wood products. Bye for now, Mateo.